Sorry, everybody. All right. Just to go back real quick, we um, had very limited discussion on 525 Parker Street. The board did approve the minutes from the last public meeting and regular meeting. And um, now that we're recording, I just want to put that on the record. Um, the one minor comment that the chairman had was regarding the, um, the discussion that took place at the public hearing last um, with the joint with the uh, city council regarding um, the topic at, on hand, which was the overlay. It kind of got uh, um, taken over by the actual project itself, which which has a long way to go before it's even going to be uh, on the table for consideration. But in any event, that's just kind of the way it turned out. So we'll yeah. wait for them to reconvene. Yeah. Um, so as far as Wildebrook Estates, we did, we got petitioned by the owner of the previous owner of the land, um, who still has a, an escrow with the city of a little over $50,000. Know, the city has not accepted the roadway at all yet within the subdivision. Um, and uh, we were we we're withholding that 50,000 until we did that. Chris, did we, am I wrong on that? Did we, act, did we, we didn't accept the roadway yet, correct? The roadway is not accepted from yeah, the so. okay. second bridge out to what was the old cul-de-sac where Leo ends. Yeah, yeah okay, thank you. Yep. For some reason I was having second thoughts there. Um, and so there, there are some issues out on the site too with regard to drainage. And, uh, but I will go through the petition. The first is the, uh, the request to withdraw um, Wilder Lane in Brookside Drive uh, beyond Leo Drive, which, is, which are two cul-de-sacs that were never built out in their associated lots including three easements, uh, three easements, drainage easements. Um, the city solicitors seem to think that was, that would be okay. We'd have to go through the decertification process as you would with any like subdivision, um, which would require public hearings and public input before the planning board was to take action on it. If it did decide to move in that direction and uh, decertify those or withdraw those portions of the subdivision. Just to be clear, those lots are currently undeveloped, correct? Correct, and the roadways are not built. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think his reasoning for that is, well, it could be a couple things. He is probably paying taxes on, on them as building lots. And I don't think he plans on building well and uh, may want to, um, offer them as open space in the future to either the city or the um, North County Land Trust, which owns the, all, the, all the land contiguous with it in the subdivision. Um, secondly, uh, his request is to for the planning board to continue to hold $7,600 um, in escrow. That is for um, when, the, when the subdivision was approved and well actually amended in 2006, the planning board required the developer to um, develop a, a housing association, which would then be um, charged with maintaining all the drainage easements within the subdivision. In order to um, initiate that, they needed, to, they needed to collect $200 from each property owner. When they purchased the property before they get occupancy, the, the building commissioner was supposed to request the $200, which would then go into the homeowners association, which would then compile money over time in order to uh, maintain them. And that was never done. So um, there is no, there is a homeowners association that was formed in 2009. Um, it was never, it was never, um, they never collected the money and it was never formally, um, developed 
within the, within the uh, the ownership of the parcels within the development. Um, I think um, Henry and his um, wife, who's since passed, are the two officers within the association as we speak. So they never formed an actual neighborhood association with the residents that live there now. Um, so there is no money. And so Henry has agreed to give the city $7,600. That's the $200 for every one of the 30 some odd uh, lots that had sold within the subdivision. Um, that moves on to the third um, ask within the petition and that's to rescind the requirement in the notice of subdivision amendment, which was in 2006, that um, the clause in the amendment, the sale agreement and deed of conveyance of each lot shall contain and be subject to the declaration of trust acceptable to the planning board, which requires the establishment of a homeowners organization that is responsible for the management, maintenance, improvement and repair of the detention basins and associated drainage with works located with outside of the public street beyond the layout. Um, again, that uh, from a legal standpoint can get fairly tricky. Um, you know, each homeowner within that subdivision is part of the association. Um, Mr. Flick, Attorney Flick does not feel that Henry or Mr. Cormier has the right to ask for the rescind rescission of that clause, which will ultimately rescind the actual homeowners association because he, he does not make up the entire association. The, the homeowners association, make sure I understand this chunk of it before you move on, is a legal entity that does exist even on paper. Correct. Okay. Well, every, then yeah. Mr. Cormier, is that his last name, Cormier? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. I, I concur with Mr. Flick. He can't arbitrarily request that it be dissolved, not if it's an association. Right. So made, made up of all the residents. There. Made up of all the residents. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that this this ask, I think, requires a lot more thought and discussion and input from uh, the city solicitor and the board itself, if we wanted to consider moving forward with that. Uh, you don't have to. Um, and the fourth ask is, the, uh, is to authorize the return of his uh, escrow balance. So that would be the $50,000 and change minus the $7,600 that he's um, requested we keep and um, returning the, the remainder of it. And, uh, and again, I think uh, after walking the site last year, um, with the uh, DPW director, uh, Chris Coughlin, the city engineer, and Rob Oliver, Jeff Legro, the um, conservation agent at the time. Uh, we determined that there was a, a, a lot of work that, uh, well, deferred maintenance that was never done to the drainage structures and, dra and, and drainage overall on site and uh, storm scepters. And, um, and it really wasn't from the look of it, um, uh, working adequately. There has been some flooding down in that area, down at the far end, the north end of Leo, Leo Drive. And um, um, it was evident that it wasn't working properly. So there's a, no, there's a, a number of, uh, a large amount of work that needs to be done there. Uh, maintenance work and um, probably the rebuilding of some of that infrastructure in order for it to, to work properly. Now, are we referring to strictly a drainage issue or was this related to building out the lots? All this uh, deferred maintenance that you refer to, because I didn't, I didn't make it to that site walk, so. It's, um, it's a matter of the detention and retention ponds working properly, being maintained over the years, it never happened. Okay, so that so, all goes back to the water issues. Yeah, and okay. they were, you know, they were built 20, 30 years ago when the initial subdivision was um, approved, and they haven't been maintained since that we know of. And if you look at them, it's, I think it's pretty evident. 
Chris, would you concur on that? Hi. Um, yeah, it's clear that there's a lot of long-term growth, especially in the detention basins that you can see off to the edges of the roads. Um, so there's a significant amount of money uh, worth of work that needs to happen to bring that back to what would have been an acceptable um, condition if the city were to accept those roadways. Mark, you're, you're muted. Of course I am. The condition out there that you saw, uh, is that playing into uh, any effects that are on the accepted part of the streets? Or is it all just the unaccepted end? It continues even in the accepted portion. Okay. Um, where those, I believe, have probably fallen onto the city because we were in a similar situation to we're in right now. Um, so, so that out there is, is affecting all the way out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's right. a number of issues out there. Yeah, there was also some undermining of the roadway down in the area at the northern part of Leo Drive where it did flood. Um, that should be addressed. I don't think it's anything major, but there was some undermining and... Um, yeah, especially in the sidewalks on the northerly side of the road. Yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Paul yeah, Cormier. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree. I think giving back his, uh, his security deposit it's too soon, $50,000 does not go far anymore. Uh, if you do give him back his security deposit, you'll never see it again, as, as far as I believe. Uh, and uh, so I believe we should hold on to the security deposit. That's my, that's my thought on this right now. Mr. Stephen Cormier. Yes, I concur with uh, Paul and probably the other members of the board. By far, fifty thousand dollars isn't going to get us anywhere close to where we should be as far as the drainage and damage that's been done out there already. Um, I believe that we should definitely hold on to that fifty thousand. Yeah, I, I concur with that because eventually. Uh, you know, bringing that back up to snuff, I have a feeling it's going to come back on the city uh, in order to maintain the integrity of, you know, the accepted parts of the street. Um, yeah, that's my feeling. The escrow it shouldn't be returned, especially in light of the fact that uh, what was supposed to be done out there for uh, drainage and, and detention was never done or was never maintained as it was supposed to be, as was agreed. And as far as the homeowners association, um, I, I don't see that Mr. Henry Cormier is, as an individual is really in a position to request that that be rescinded. He is an individual member of it. Uh, that would be up to the entire homeowners association to uh, vote to disband themselves. And I don't see that happening, especially since they're mostly an entity on paper right now. So I would, my, my opinion is no on that one. Mr. Steven. Mr. Chairman, uh, the $7,600, is that in the escrow? Is that in a separate account? Maybe Trevor can answer that. Yeah. That's part of the escrow, isn't it, Trevor? Yeah, he was requesting that we take that out of the $50,000 and keep it. No, I, my thought is we keep all of it because it's going to be needed to repair it out there. Yes. I believe we should, Mr. Chairman, I believe we should hold on to 50,000 as the binder that he promised as far as finishing the roads, nothing to do with the $7,600 or the homeowners association that was failed to uh, take part prior to this. Are you making, uh, making a motion, Mr. Steve? Yes, I'll make a motion, put it on the floor that we uh, hold the $50,000 as is in the, uh, escrow account and uh, strictly as the $50,000, nothing mentioned about the $7,600 at all. Okay. All right, motion made and seconded. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, you're coming in. Thank you for uh, running from one meeting to the next. We appreciate that. Yep. Uh, we're discussing the, uh, the Wilderbrook Estate subdivision escrow 
you know, I read the document, so I'm somewhat familiar with what you were, what you were discussing. So I'm ready for a vote. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, those opposed? Motion carries. All right, now the rest of it. The, uh, see the withdrawal of two cul-de-sacs and those uh, cul-de-sacs and those associated lots. That's where I'm getting a little lost. Did Mr. Flick give us any further guidance on that? I, I don't understand the ramifications of that other than it means what, it reverts back to the city? Well, I think eventually it's gonna revert back to the city anyways from the sound of the letter. If Mr. Cormier yeah. stops paying taxes on it and, and all that, so. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's what his attorney indicated that he essentially was just gonna walk away anyway. Right, and so I don't know um, if it really matters whether the planning board takes action on this or not. You know, there was talk about the, um, him donating the land to the North County Land Trust, which is still a possibility. I don't think the land trust is interested in accepting the gift if it's still uh, a subdivided piece of land because now they become party to the homeowners association based on the amount of lots on those two cul-de-sacs, mm -hmm. which means now they're gonna be- um, They're on the hook for the uh, maintenance. Correct, based on those number of lots. So um, that's prob one reason and if it's, it's obviously he's paying more money now for those cul-de-sacs because they're all assessed as building lots. All right, so we can either vote on that or we can let nature take its course. Any opinions from uh, the gentleman of the board? Mr. Stephen Cormier. Mr. Chairman, I believe we should leave it alone. Let, let, let it run its course and uh, the city will pick it up eventually. Otherwise it's going to talk, talk to the city with a lot of litigation and uh, playing into something I believe that uh, is just gonna come back to bite us anyway. I concur with Steve. I do too. All right. Very good. Uh, would we need to uh, help me out here, Trevor? Would we need to vote on that? Or is that just an administrative matter? Um. Again, I don't know if it really matters. Um, you don't have to take any. Well, you don't have to take any. You don't have to take any action on it. Yeah, it's okay. It's, um, but if, but it's if, you the... if you choose to take action, you can take a vote. That uh, you. But we're really again, not taking any action. We're just going to let nature take its course, and that's already on the yeah. record. There you go. So yeah. fair enough. My suggestion would be to take a vote to do take no action. Mm -hmm. I like that. So that it's a matter of record. That's even more a matter of record than our discussion. Very, very well put, sir. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. I move that we planning board take no action relative to the, I forget what do we call it? Uh, to the withdrawing of the cul-de-sacs yeah, and associated lots. Yes. I'll second, uh, I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Paul Cormier. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Announcements, next meeting Tuesday, November 10th at 7 p.m. That sound good to everyone? Yep. And That's on my calendar. Yep, and our 2021 meeting schedule is included in your packet. Yes, I got it. Got it. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, Trevor, you all set? No. Nope. Just one quick question. Uh, is the board comfortable with seven o'clock? Do you want to move it to six or what, how do you feel about that? No. At this point in time with uh, COVID, everybody working from home for the most part. Um, I'll be honest with you, I kind of like the earlier meeting, but if we can all make it. Makes no difference to me. Yeah. Either um, one's fine. Either one, yeah. And right after this, I'm going into another meeting, so. 
Not a problem. Can't hear Mark. Go ahead, Mark. I keep on. I, I, I was hitting you. Sorry. Will you stop that? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help you out. <laughs> That's something very important to say. I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> All right, so that leaves us at to six or seven, we don't know. Um, if we can all do six, let's do six. Why wrap up our day a little earlier? Sure. I'll I concur. On. That's fine. Yep, all right. That's fine. 6 p.m. Tuesday, November 10th. I'll entertain a motion. So move. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn this meeting. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you Good next night. time. All right. Good night. Uh, take care. Good night. Bye bye.